Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. We're heading into the weekend, so time to play with some cars. Seems like a good time for a video. So, as we have kind of been advancing what we've talked about, we've spent some time talking about VE tables. And regardless of the ECU that you're using, obviously I use Infinities a lot, also Haltex, maybe, or Haltech, excuse me. Maybe you're using a MoTeC, maybe you're using a FuelTech. You can set up volumetric efficiency tables in a lot of different ECUs. So I thought we should go back to the last one that we built and show how it actually worked out on a car that I was tuning this morning. Now the car's not done, but it's going to kind of show application. It's using very similar injectors to what we had used in that example. It was a 2JZ. It was ID thousands. This car is also a 2JZ. It's a little bit bigger turbo than I was thinking in my previous episode, episode two. Uh, this was a 6870. It was a stock three liter. It did have cams. It had GSC S1s in it. Uh, ID 1050s. So some slight changes. But let's get to the infinity table. Now this is a table that we came up with as a starting point. Um, if you haven't seen that video, I'm not cool enough to put live links, but if you go to my channel list, you'll be able to find it pretty easy. So this is the ID1000, uh, I think I said it was a 35R-ish style turbo, maybe 64, 66. You can kind of see peak torque was I was expecting at 4,500 or 5,000. Now, I don't want to show the power band or any of the dyno sheets from the car. Number one, it's not done. Number two, I don't have the owner's permission to do that. I don't know if he wants to keep it secret. So we're not going to really talk about any of that. Um, suffice it to say, it is a pump gas map. But this is what we came up with originally. Now... If we go to what it actually took to make this car work, you're going to notice just our random example wasn't too far off. Now, I'm going to zoom in just a little. Bear with me. But we kind of see the numbers went from 60 down there at idle to 65. Peak torque, it went from 100 to 104. And then as it, it, it goes up, it gets a little higher continuously. I think 7,500. I have, because it is a stock bottom end, I have the rev limiter set at 7,500 as springs and shimless buckets. We're seeing 97 and a half. Uh, if I was to click anywhere randomly on the data log. It's adding 4% fuel. It's suggesting that I do 105 VE down low. You can see that right here. I have 100 in the map. It's only 14 pounds or so. It's not it's not crazy right there. It's starting to starting to make some boost. It made a peak of uh, 22 as I recall or 21.7 maybe. We'll we'll go look at that. You can kind of see a trend though. The VE it's telling me to add the whole time. Now, there's a reason I didn't really do that. We're going to get into that. Um, let's go look at the injector data. This is kind of interesting. So, this is the injector data that's important. I do this right here, just in case the vacuum line falls off. It has some way to try to force the injector to richen up. Uh, vacuum line to the fuel pressure regulator, that is. So for an ID1050, numbers are definitely low. And an ID1050 flows 1,050 cc's plus. Uh, it's not like the ID1000 where that's really more like a 900 cc injector. So I fudged these numbers. Remember I talked about fudging the numbers to get it to work. Well, because this is 20% lower than it should be, these numbers are about 20% lower than they should be. We're going to explain why. So don't worry, I'm not going to leave you hanging out there. Some of it was because I wanted this to look realistic. But as we can see, 
it still doesn't look realistic. What did I miss? Or did I? So, let's go to Wizards. Now, this is a really important part of the operation. Um, in this particular ECU, it's under Injector Setup. Uh, the Haltech has it under the Fuel tab. You have something for specific gravity. Um, I don't believe it has a stoichiometric function. A lot of ECUs will. So in the AM, though, it's show fuel properties. So this value right here, if you zoom in, it's a 14.7 stoichiometric. 7.750 specific gravity. Oh, Aaron, but that's right. It's 14.7. Ah, but it's 14.7 for E0. And this is why... I kind of let those numbers ride high because I needed to make things match up. And we're going to get to this. E10, which is pretty much what everybody always has, is actually 14.08. Its specific gravity is actually 0.73. Oops, did I get the decimal in there? I probably did, but we'll just do it just to be that guy. It is uh, 0.737 specific gravity. Now, why this is important is if we were to bring up a calculator real fast and divide this 14.08 divided by 14.7, there's 5 or 6% difference right there. Hmm, that's very interesting. So if I had set that fuel up where it was supposed to be for normal pump gasoline these numbers well out the top you can see it's actually pulling but these numbers right here in peak torque and in spool would be zero 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 so why didn't i do that easy easy answer this car is a map switch car he's going to run 110 for racetrack only race gas is e0 and there are specific gravity and stoichiometric considerations to take into account. Now, I only wanted to fudge the injector numbers so much to make this work, but I have a feeling, knowing this customer, he's gonna run on race gas pretty much all the time, and all of these numbers are gonna be right. I started to double check it on race gas on the dyno. Sure enough, all my numbers were really, really close. I could start pulling off of this map if I want, and I might. There's there's some tricks I can do in the background. But by and large, because I knew that it was going to be on 110, I wanted to make the map match the 110. To me, that was more important. Now, if it was flex fuel, you kind of get some, some uh, leverage there, some ability to move things around. But the indicated injector flow is 864 cc, so it's way low compared to what it should be. Now, why am I bringing this up? When you build your VE map, we talked about injector data, we checked, we talked about the flow rating, the, the dead time or latency. I didn't spend a ton of time on the stoichiometric values or the specific gravity. But whatever fuel you run, you need to have that in there to make the fuel model accurate. Now, some older ECUs, sure, you can get away with just doing whatever. Most of them don't even know that you're on methanol or ethanol or race gas. You just kind of move the number around till everything looks good. But if we go back to the wizard real fast, you can see that every fuel, is it still, is this saved by the way? Um, every fuel that you're gonna pick, it's gonna have what it feels is an average. 0.780 for E85, stoichiometric is a 10.0, great. E98, 0.785. 9.0 stoichiometric. Uh, flex fuel, the way they do the math, it's kind of, you have to just have faith here. This is how this works. You have two different stoichiometric values. You have a sliding table, so you have to set that up. You have to know that you are going to be setting the scale to E100 or E85 or whatever the maximum that that particular car is going to run. So it, it gives you some ability to tune that. Gasoline we looked at, but this is for E0. So you need to know what the values are for the fuel you're going to run. And then methanol, rounding out the top, 
a 0 0.792, 647 is stoichiometric because we're running uh, twice as much on average just to make it work right, possibly more. And this also is the table that you would use to help figure out mixes of maybe you're putting some nitro in the fuel, you're putting some other stuff in there. Um, you have gasoline, so E0, but it's Q16, so just going from memory, I think it's like a 13.3. So you would have to put the stoichiometric value in there to make these numbers in the VE table match up. Some crazy stuff to consider, but very important. And realistically, that's the final part of setting up your VE table, knowing your fuel data. Now, if you wanted to be really, really high tech, you could put fuel temp sensor in there because that changes the viscosity of the fuel, which uh, I'm not a chemist. So uh, if you want to correct me in the comments, please feel free to. I want to learn uh, fuel temperature will affect the flow rating. So um, that's something that some ECUs take into the fuel model. Obviously, as you spray the hot fuel into, let's say, 100 degree intake air temps. We'll see what this one is here real fast. Uh, might have to go to the tune tab. Air temp was 69 degrees. That's great. The air moving across the sensor is 69 degrees, but maybe the aluminum up against the head where the injector is is heat soaked and is close to coolant temp. Um, that's going to affect how it vaporizes. That's going to affect how much it burns and how stable combustion is. So there's some things there. Anyway, guys, uh, that's about all I have on that. Um, as you have done, please continue to post questions, comments, criticisms. I am here to help you guys. And while I want everybody to tune, remember my job is being a tuner. So in the end, if you're competition to me, I'm probably not going to give you all the secrets to the universe. Uh, I'm going to help you find some basics to hopefully not blow up your own car. That's the goal here. Uh, you know, maybe there's some stuff that you need polished on if you are a tuner. That's great. This is more about theory, right, rather than practice. I hope that you have the practice on your own car and you're not practicing on customers. If you like this content, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so. If you know somebody that might like content like this, uh, we're heading into winter. We're not going to have a lot of races to cover. I suggest watching Australian channels because it's their summer. Um, but, you know, share it with a friend. If you want notified as I add content, click the bell icon. Uh, if you want to be surprised at new content, then don't do that. But... You know, you get a notification that, oh, hey, that guy, he posted something again. And you can just go watch it on your device, watch it on your TV, whatever you want to do. Anyway, guys, take care. Hope everybody's having fun.